What is up, App Nation? Welcome to another Friday YouTube live stream where we've got a few apps loaded to roast on your behalf. And then we've got a great guest where we're going to talk all about game monetization. We've got an upcoming video that I'm super excited for you guys to watch that really walks you through the best practices of game monetization. But I decided to dress up a little bit, so I'm trying to look my quarantine vest. My daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, actually picked out this outfit. And so I was like, you know what? Let's do something different. But let me introduce <laughs> this guy right oh, This guy right here. His name is Tom Hammond, and he is the co-founder and CEO at Theorem Reach, which allows you to add rewarder surveys to help you better monetize your users. Tom, welcome back. I think it's your third time back on the show. Yeah, it's it's great to be here. Um, yeah, you know, monetization is always a hot topic. I was actually just on a. Uh, I think it was like a Game Masters uh, YouTube thing that they'd put together. So I was watching that yesterday. Um, and at the end, he kind of did a poll of like, what are the things that your app is struggling with? Or like, what are you working towards? And the winner by a significant margin was monetization. So, you know, I think that's something that everyone struggles with. How do I effectively monetize my audience? And usually that goes into two things. You know, what is my retention rate uh, so I can keep people around so that I can monetize them. And then two, uh, what are some strategies that I can use to actually monetize those? So um, we'll, we'll definitely touch on a lot of those in that video that we uh, are gonna be putting out here. And I'm sure we'll go over some stuff on today's call as well, as uh, right. some of our, our apps requested some monetization help too. Yes, and that's what I'm super excited about. And I did this case study a couple of weeks ago Tom, where he's getting the app developer, and it wasn't a game, but he was getting about 60 downloads a day or all organically. And we changed some of the monetization things around and he went from a dollar a day to $17 a day. So I feel like, you know, too many times app developers and app creators, they focus more on the downloads. Just how do I just get more downloads? Thinking that that's gonna change the revenue and just change a lot of different things. When I feel like the product, if you're getting about 50 plus downloads, if you fix the product, that's where you'll see the, the big results. Yeah, absolutely. And once you start having some of those dollars, you can reinvest them into user acquisition or whatnot, and you'll see the total dollars keep going up and up. Totally, totally. All right, let's say some, let's say what's up to Vignek. What's happening, brother? Wallpaper Lee. Hi, Steve. Hi, Wallpaper Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Drew James, what's up, brother? Always good to see you. Official Ben, it's a great question. Official Ben, so I just created this video. He says, hey, Steve, I have a question. Are you personally recommending Key App or is it pre paid promotion. So they did give me some money to play with. So that is in turn what why I created the video, but I actually do recommend them. I'm trying a couple of different services and I like their interface a lot more and I haven't seen too many like negative results from Key App. So I wish they would change their name. It's always hard to remember, but Key App Top. Yes, it was a paid promotion and yes, I am so I can do double that as well. <laughs> All right. And then question for Tom or Tom, will you recommend me Polefish for reward <laughs> surveys to my app? Tom, I want to see how you answer this one. Ah, sure. Um, well, it kind of depends on your app. You know, if you want to send it to us, we could give you a, a specific recommendation. Uh, one thing that I uh, recently thought was odd with Polefish with IDFA, and I know that it just got pushed back, uh, but Polefish is actually requiring you to have your users opt into uh, IDFA collection rather than giving you a way to still run without it. Uh, very interesting. Um, that all said, uh, if you do choose to go with them, they have really good direct surveys, kind of uh, tend to be lower inventory, but their direct surveys are pretty nice to take. Um, I see a lot of apps that will add pull fish um, as well as theorem reach. So, um, you know, if a pull fish survey is available, uh, let users take it. Typically they won't qualify and there won't be a lot of inventory. Um, and then for all your other needs, they kind of use theorem reach for, to fill that monetization space. So definitely something you can check out. Um, but the, the IDFA thing is a little bit weird. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Great. The, and then one of the things that I really is going to be the highlight of our game monetization video is some using some of those psychological triggers, so can you go into some of the psychological triggers that you've seen that game developers work really well with? Yeah, so, um, well, and, and this will kind of go into, you know, anytime you're creating a game or an app or a service or really anything, you know, the first question that you need to think about is 
what is the purpose of this thing? And then once you determine, you know, the purpose of it, you kind of say, okay, well, who is my audience that is going to actually use this thing? Um, because whatever you're creating, you're not creating it for you. It doesn't matter if you find your game fun. It doesn't matter if you find your service useful or your tool kind of cool and fun. It matters if your users find value in it and they find it useful, they find it fun. Um, so you've got to get this perfect picture of the persona of who is this person uh, that we're going to do this game for. Um, and we'll go into this a little bit more detail uh, as we dive into our two uh, games, two or three games we're going to do today. Um, so just something to keep in mind um, from a psychological trigger, there are certain things that humans all share together. Uh, we're social beings. Um, so, you know, like one of those is the concept of reciprocation. Uh, so if I take Steve out for lunch and I purchase his lunch when he wasn't expecting it, um, he's going to feel, oh, like that was really nice. But he's also going to feel a little bit obligated. So like the next time we go out for lunch, he might be like, oh, let me, you know, grab that for you. So it's kind of this like give and take as, as you give something to people, they're more likely to give back to you. So in the context of the game, when you're very generous with your players, you know, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving. Um, eventually, when you ask for that, you know, purchase or, or whatnot, they're much more likely to give back to you because uh, they have this feeling of reciprocation to you. Um, another interesting one that you can think about is the concept of anchoring. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, let's say you go to a more expensive store. Um, I'm not thinking of any good examples, but you know, <laughs> you, you know, where like all the jeans are like a hundred dollars plus or, or two hundred dollars or something like that. Um, you're gonna start to anchor your value on like a hundred dollars. So if most of the jeans are priced at like one fifty or two hundred, and suddenly you see a pair at a hundred dollars. Uh, that's going to seem like a pretty good deal. Whereas if you went to a different store where like most of the jeans cost 15 or $20, um, you're going to have a much different reality there. Um, and so like inherently you might be able to think about that, but your um, general mind is just going to like quickly match and be like, oh, this is 33% off. So I'm, I'm getting a pretty good savings here, even though it's five times more than it might be at a different store. Um, so you can use that within games, within offers, where you might, and, and I'll have an example here today where they flag something as costing $50 and they kind of have a line through it and they say, well, it's only $3 right now um, for the next hour or so. And so that's that's a way that you kind of anchor. So people are like, oh, you know, it's not just a $3 price, it's a, I'm getting a $50 you know, package of value for $3. That's a huge savings to me. I'm getting all this extra value and they're much more likely to then purchase it. Yeah, I love it. And we're gonna go dive deep into that video. So look out for it in a couple of weeks. It's gonna be out. We go through a few more tips, but I wanted to highlight that because I felt like it was so different from what you normally hear from game, like when you think about game monetization tips as well. So True Dreams, thank you. You're looking cool today. You're probably looking cool today too as well, True Dreams. And then I got Bianca. Hi, Steve. First time watching live, but I've seen many of your videos. We'll appreciate you too, Bianca. We got Vishal. Hi again. Thanks for the live stream. And I got a question for you, Tom. Tom, should I give them real money as a survey reward? <laughs> uh, well, it kind of depends on you know your app and your model and stuff. Uh, we do have a, a few uh, apps that are out there where um, you know users will engage with different actions and they kind of get paid for it. Um, it, it's kind of this entire model of almost the, the cash back uh, services like uh, PayPal just acquired Honey recently for something like $4 billion or something. Wow. Um, and so, you know, the concept is basically like, okay, if you go to Amazon and you spend money there using our link, we get paid 3% and we pay you, you know, 2% of that as the user. So the user is basically getting paid to shop. Um, and you take a small portion on that. So, you know, you kind of could do the same thing with apps. Um, it's definitely been done. We do have some apps that are out there and they do pretty solid revenue and stuff. Um, I, I would take it with a grain of salt. I would figure out first, what is the purpose of your app? Um, who is the audience for? And really think about, you know, what should I be building that's gonna add value and, and not just be a clone of something that's out there if you really wanna build, you know, something long-term. 
Um, so nice. I like it. All right. I want to say hi to Prishan <clears throat> Shu. Say hi to a few more people. And then I've got a question for you, Tom. Sai asked, do you have any clients in India? It would be great if you can share the range of ArpDAO uplift I can achieve in India or tier three or four geos. Uh, we definitely do have clients in, in India uh, and all over the world. Um, I don't actually know that number offhand. Uh, typically, I look at our overall average ARPDAO, um, which can vary a lot from app to app. Um, again, sometimes it depends on the usage rates. For example, like a poker app, um, we might see really high initial revenue where a user comes in and they take 10 or $20 worth of surveys. Once they have enough content to get into the high table, they don't really need to come back and take more surveys again unless they really suck at poker. Uh, but for a slots game where users can burn through that content every single day, um, you know, we might see them coming back and taking that stuff every day. So you can vary with your ARPDAO values and, and different things like that. Um, I, I know we have a, a decent number of surveys in, in India and some other tier three, tier four countries. Typically, our users in those countries are a little bit more fer ferocious towards taking surveys than they are in you know, the US and stuff like that. So they kind of get eaten up really quickly. Um, so there are some ways that we're you know, looking at giving you better notifications of when a survey is available for a user you know, where a user might only have a few surveys they can take per day, whereas like if they were in the US, they might have, you know, 500 or 1000 that they would qualify for at any given moment. Sai also asks, what is the minimum DAU needed to get good full rates? We don't really have any minimum DAUs. Um, I mean, we have some publishers that have like, you know, 10 DAUs. We have other publishers that have hundreds of thousands or millions of DAUs. Um, so it varies across the board. Um, I think the the general thing before DAU is more about what is the value of your currency. You know, as I mentioned with the poker app, um, users are only going to spend their time doing things like taking surveys if they're getting something out of it. Um, because they don't have any reason to uh, otherwise. Um, so, you know, if you've got that poker app, well, they're going to take the surveys to get the content so that they can play the game. And once they run out of the content, you know, maybe a couple of weeks from now, they'll come back, take some more surveys, et cetera. Um, slots game, maybe they're doing it every single day. Um, you know, for some more hyper casual games where the currency doesn't really have value to them or they're unlikely to stick around for that game for very long, you know, surveys might not be a great fit there because you could offer them gems for doing a survey, but if they don't understand what the value of those gems are, why would I spend my time doing something if I'm not getting anything out of it? Um, so that's something to think about there too. All right, I'm gonna give Tom a break from all these answer, answering <laughs> questions. We've got a couple of different apps on the docket to Rose. We've got Lucky, this is the slot machine, and we've got some really good stuff with this app and then we've got this android one i've been setting up my android stuff so right here is my little android but word boss is the other app that we're going to take a look at and i think we're we both agree this is a perfect app for rewarded surveys and we'll dive deep into word boss so so hopefully you guys are both here and then true dreams asked tom how much do you charge for a hyper casual game casual game and advanced shooter game how do you decide the costs for each genre uh, well, if you're asking about adding rewarded surveys, it's free to add into any of them. Um, as I did mention before, I would be cautious about looking at adding surveys into hyper casual. Typically, I see users not sticking around long enough where they understand the value of surveys. Um, we're definitely open to talking to you and giving you recommendations on monetization strategies or roasting your app to get a full detailed uh, mm -hmm. breakdown uh, for like casual shooter games where people can actually accrue things. They're going to stick around for a little bit longer, understand the value. Uh, surveys would definitely be a great fit. Um, and in, in terms of cost, uh, it kind of comes down to the, the time and stuff. Typically, we see publishers uh, matching whatever your in-app purchase rates are to the survey. So if $1 equals 1,000 diamonds, you know you could match that in surveys too. So if a user takes a $5 survey, they're going to get 5,000 diamonds. All right. And we've got one from Andy before we get into the first app audit. Gentlemen, question for you both. 
how do I get banner push ads? Is there a marketplace or do I have to go to each particular company? How does it work with coding within the app? Got any suggestions, Tom? I would check out Iron Source. Well, I don't know if Iron Source has banners, but I'd be surprised if they don't. Um, but look at one of those mediation companies where you can kind of get all of them together um, and let them kind of bid together. You're still going to have to add some some wrappers and some you know code base in there and stuff. Um, but that I would check them out first. Yeah, and I would here. I'll add on to. You can look at MoPub as well, or Andy. Like, frankly, you can just go with like the Google Ad, you know, the Ad Mob stuff because the fill rate should be good. MoPub will do some mediation. Iron Source will do some mediation too. So you can just go to one source and they'll fill everything if they don't, if they can't find anything. But like, like we talked about, like I think it's just like getting it there. Are you seeing some returns and then advancing to that next step? If you're asking that type of question, you're probably in the newer stage. So just get something in there, start seeing some returns and then be like, oh, how do I optimize this? Maybe I need to go to a mediation source because the fill rate isn't big. So, you know, you could just start with AdMob and go from there. It's the easy first step or go to a mediation there as well. All right, cool. You want to get into our first app? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we got it up. So here it is, Lucky North. Oops, you know what? Let me share the screenshots first before we go into that. Let me change my screen share, get you guys everything. All yeah, right. and so I'm, I'm looking with what they said. So they kind of said, um, they've been struggling with in-app monetization efforts for this app in particular. Okay. All right. Well, uh, then let's go into the, the app itself then. Yeah. All right. Let me keep that. Okay. Here it is. So I'm launching it for the very first time. I like to give you my first time user experience. <laughs> We've updated our terms. This could be the, I wonder if it's an IDFA type of stuff, but all right, let's see. Probably CCPA stuff, all the, all the good privacy stuff that's been going on. <laughs> yeah, all the good stuff. Welcome bonus. I like that, right? Like, I love this. Oh, Feels you good. got the welcome bonus. Yeah. All right. That's good. We've got reciprocation going on right now. Yeah, just things you talked about already. So love this. Feels like a casino to me. You know, I think this is a good one. I'm going to hit a few things. I like this free coins right here. Uh, I think my, like my one thing with this is... Uh, maybe a little bit more of like a guided tour or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and I, I also wonder, I don't know, I, I would definitely consider doing some AB testing around just giving them all the different options and stuff, maybe because it is a casino that makes sense, but um, sometimes taking users kind of stepwise, like one of the best first time user experiences I just recently played around with was in Merge Dragons, where they just like got me right into the mix where I'm like, oh, doing the thing and like it feels fun right away. It's like guided, but it's not like a forced click into all the things because I kind of hate those forced click tutorials. Yeah. But it's like it like takes me right into it and lets me it, I can't do anything wrong, basically. And then as I kind of progress through, they slowly introduce some more features. So it's like still getting that tutorial stuff and they're not adding all the features like this, but I have to like beat a few levels before I get to the the full view, you know, where I can pick everything. Um, so that's definitely something I'm talking about a lot. Yeah, and it'd be interesting if, if you've got, a, I don't know who, I forget the name of the developer, but if this developer has info on if they're playing slots more often, it might just be easier because I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Granted, I'm not a normal slots casino type of player, mm -hmm. but I'm a little bit overwhelmed of, of where I should go into and where I should start playing. But Tom, what do you, what do you, what's your game of choice? Let's go into that. So I was mostly playing slots. Okay. Um, and, and as I was getting ready to like dive into this, I, I started by getting into the mantra of like, okay, well, wh what's the purpose of the game? And the purpose of the game is to entertain. What's mm -hmm. the purpose of a casino app? Okay, well, it's probably I want to be a really big winner. I want to make a lot of money, a lot of coins, you know, feel like I'm pretty awesome. Um, so I assume that's where we're at. And so that's probably the goal of this. So um, let's pick one of these slots here. I think there's too many options too. I don't know, personally, look, I am not a slot player, so I don't know how these other slot games work, but at the same time, like, there feels like too many options to me. We like mm -hmm. options, but it feels like a little bit too much. So let's, so it's pointing down. I don't know what this arrow is about, but okay, let's spin. Yeah, so I, I will say it was a little bit weird to me, and again, I haven't actually played real slots or 
don't really play that many slots, but like the fact that these are a little out of line, I don't know. It just seemed a little weird to me. Like, yeah, what is this win? Um, what is the the winner? Okay, so you got level up. So that was a pretty good like in your face. Like you got a reward. Oh, you unlocked a new one. That's pretty cool. <laughs> me. So keep spinning. All right, let's let's kind of figure this out. So uh, the one thing that I noticed, so in preparation for this, I played a fair bit of Slotomania, which is like one of the top grossing Playtika slots games. Um, so Slotomania, um, there was a few differences. Um, I think by the time I spun it a second time, I got this big win, like in your face, all these stars, um, different things like that. So I feel like at least with slots games, you really need to like rig your slots so that players are getting that big dopamine hit. Like you're a fantastic winner. It doesn't even matter if you're only winning like 500 coins or something like that, like flash it in your face. I was playing coin master some to like prep for this too. And it's like, every time you win anything, it's like, psh, there's like coins and stuff going everywhere. And it's like, Oh, I'm so awesome at this. Um, and this one, like it, it feels like the the little win at the bottom is too small and it's like not flashy enough that like players are just doing awesome. Um, part of me was wondering, like, is the fact that we're in a casino and there's so many different things. Uh, there we go. That that right there, that, that should be happening every time you're like earning, you know, coins in the slots. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like that. I like the little da daily bonus. I think it could have been brought up sooner rather than me having to wait for one. I know you gave me a great bonus at the very start, but I think that would have been interesting too. And I think I love the prize wheel. It's something that we talked about in our video. We know it works well for retention, just changing up the pace of the game a little bit too, but the prize wheel, it's spun by itself. And I think to get that dopamine hit, to feel like mm -hmm. we're in control, like we earned it, you, something you talked about in the video coming up too, was let me spin it. Like, let me hit a button that says spin. And then let me, it feels like I want something rather than, yeah. The video, it was just it was just showing me the animation and just spun by itself. So it didn't mm -hmm. feel like I was winning anything really. It was just kind of like a nice to have. Yeah. Yeah. Surya. So Surya. Surya is the first developer. You said <laughs> the game monetization has been an epic fail. So I think there are ways that you can do this. Let's play blackjack. I think that might be more interesting. Again, I feel that like sounds... there's a lot of options, but maybe that's what casinos are all about. All right, let's three hand. I don't even know what three hand blackjack is. <laughs> I've only ever played standard blackjack. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Me. Like, what's the standard blackjack? So I think here, you know, Tom and I are very casual players, I guess, when it comes to this stuff. And so, like, if your game is more for advanced casino players, great. Like, just make sure you're targeting the, for those people too. But I guess yeah. we can do all this stuff. So I guess we're playing all three hands. So oh. I'm going to hit this sucker. I'll stand. Uh, I'll stand here. And then obviously. Definitely hit that, yeah. Definitely hit that. Uh, 17. What do you think, Tom? Showing an eight. You know, Might as well go for it. All right, let's see. Uh, bust. Okay, 19. Push. Lost. Oh, total win. Yeah, see, like some of the animations here, the total win, you didn't notice it. Like it's barely noticeable. And I yeah. think this is... I don't know with casino games, it might be hard, but you know, we talked about this. Like if there is a daily reward that we're getting, we just got a reward wait, right when we opened the app, we got a reward. I got another reward from the prize wheel, like allow me to double up those winnings or allow me to earn. If I'm about to leave like, Hey, you earned this much want to double it up by filling out a rewarded survey or watching a video ad. And so these are op ways that you can start. If you're just depending on me to buy, I think that might be a little bit harder for me to do. So and here is, yeah, oh, go ahead. sorry. No, no, go for this it. This was a good example where I was comparing to Slotomania and uh, getting back to the psychological reference points. So that purchase screen that you just had up. Oh yeah. Uh, so they just kind of have the, the values of those screens there. So let me find a little screenshot here. I might just have to hop back into the game. Yeah, so, um, you know, compare that with the Slotomania screen that I've got up here. So, like, 
they're showing me, okay, this is like double the value. You're getting a hundred percent more. There's like different options. So like that's setting reference points, you know, better than where you are here now. Like um, designing your store screen so that people feel like they're actually getting value uh, from these things. So like, this is just kind of like showing me stuff. And like the loyalty program is kind of there, but I think this could be done a lot better um, in the sense of like, you know, even if you only want to give 30 million coins for $99, like put 10 million and like put a line through it and then say like 300% value and yeah. then give them 30 million or something like that. That's going to be a psychological cue, make your stuff worth a lot more to them. Um, something that uh, the Slotomania did, once you went to the store the first time, if you close out of this, they would hit you with a special offer um, that was, uh, it That's looked cool. like this, I think. So as soon as you close out, they gave you this special offer, which again, you can see the reference point yeah. and now it's only $3 and I get 1.8 million coins. So like, this is like significantly better than the store. So like, they're pretty aware that, Hey, this person was probably just clicking around, but like, let's see if we can, you know, entice them in with this purchase price. And then the other thing that Slotomania did, um, once I closed out of that offer again, well, they got me right back into the slots and they started hitting me with big win, big win, big win. Um, they started inviting me to um, brag about being such a winner to my friends. <laughs> they hit me with another big win. Um, and then I got like a level boost, you know, daily treat um, that I got to collect. Um, and then right after that, I got hit basically with the same offer again. It's like this offer flow, but now I'm getting like 4.25 you know, million coins more. You know, same cost, same value. You can see it's actually even kind of linked. Like the timer is just ticked down like another minute or two that I've been playing. Um, and so they almost have this like offer chain where like once you do this action of going to the store, then we're going to hit you with this offer. And if you don't hit there, we're going to hit you with a bunch of like really rewarding actions to get that dopamine uh, reciprocation uh, tree going. And then they hit you with an offer that's even more valuable. Um, so very interesting kind of breakdown and differences where I didn't see this, you know, within the the app that we're we're digging into. Yeah, so I, I can go into the buy coins, which is huge. So the millionaire special gets you 8 million coins. Make sure to come back each day to collect the 1 million bonus. Okay, so I guess I can buy 8 million coins for about $5. But I think what the Slotto Mania example was, what's the value, right? Like, is it normally $50? Is it, what is it? Because it, we want to feel like it's a value, especially if it's a first time user. And so what is the value right now? You're just saying eight million is five dollars, but am I getting a discount? People love that type of stuff, and so think about that and think about incorporating the sense of urgency. Going back to the psychological triggers, urgency is a big one where you got to tell people because they're gonna. If we need, we are humans. We want to. We're gonna delay a decision as long as we can until you give us a deadline that says, "Hey, you got to make that decision. Either you're in or you're out." And then at least you get a decision, right? Otherwise, we're just gonna keep delaying it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, and if you look at the coin master offers that they do, they all have like seven, eight minute, like time limits on them. And like, yeah. they'll just be gone if you don't get them right away. Um, one difference that I saw between coin master and this game is like, when you run out of coins in this game, they just pop up that million dollar or 8 mm. million coin offer. And it's always the same and it's always just there and there's no differences. But like with coin master, when you run out of, uh rolls they are spins they like hit you with something to like invite your facebook friends to get 40 spins and then they hit you with another offer and it's like four or five offers every time you like run out of spins um and usually they orient it such that right at the end of the spins you'll like get a big win and then you like you'll just miss it and like oh you just have this like urge to spin it again yeah and then they hit you with that offer to make the purchase um and it's like progressively more and more. And so like, if you can have that psychological trigger, you know, programmed into your code such that, oh, when I spin this, I, you know, get, to, oh, I just want to spin it one more time. And yeah. now I can, if I purchase that. 
Yeah. And then, I mean, it's a great spot to add a rewarded video, rewarded survey in there too. Like, hey, you ran a client, you want to watch something, you want to fill out a survey, you get this many bonuses. And I think instead of just trying to get people to buy, because sometimes, you know, people aren't really ready to buy right away. You, this little gift center that I found right here, Tom, look, Lucky North Casino has just sent you a coin griff. Okay, cool. Claim. You know, like you can get people to do certain things. You're hiding stuff. So as you run out of coins, if you're just showing the same pop-up, think about being more intelligent about it and maybe getting people to connect to Facebook because that's a, a win for you or giving mm -hmm. your email address or just, you know, like giving me that extra bonus or watching any of those rewarded videos or rewarded surveys. So think about doing that stuff. And I think it's a great looking game. Like you got something here. You just mm -hmm. need to fix the small little things to make more money off of this. Yeah, I think adding those animations in. One other cool thing that CoinMaster does that I haven't really seen in other slots games, and again, I was mostly playing the slots. I haven't dug into the blackjack or bingo, but um, CoinMaster, as you're spinning it, um, you can print it on auto spin, and occasionally they'll let these like balloons start to float up. And if you see them and pop them, you get like bonus spins and stuff in there. So it encourages people to always have their attention on the game and what's rolling and spinning and what you're winning and whatnot uh, mm -hmm. because you never know when that's going to pop up and that's going to just give you free value um, so if you could come up with some sort of uh, interaction or things that people can do while the spinning is happening to keep their focus on what they're winning and what they're doing um, and you're giving those people you know free value and stuff i think they'll be staying around more because it's like oh well this game gives me all this like free stuff i just gotta like make sure that I'm paying attention to it. Yeah, so true. All right, let's get into some of the questions. Bianca asks, do app previews have to feature the iPhone screen? I wanna make an app v preview video that would feature user testimonials on camera interviews. Bianca, you know, I think it depends on the reviewer, frankly. And then secondly, Apple does have some strict guidelines on what you can use in the app preview videos. If you slice it so that you start showing a little bit about the app and then have some user testimonials, I think that's a way to get around it. If you just have customer testimonials, I doubt Apple will pass it through because they're very strict. Google Play, you can do that because you can just add any YouTube video. But on Apple, they're very strict on what you can and cannot do on the app preview videos. We have done ones where if like text animations and then showing a little bit about the app. I like those personally myself. And so if you can do that, show a little bit about the app, hit it with some customer testimonials, go back to showing the app. I think that's the way I would try to do it and get it approved by Apple. Anything you want to add to that, Tom? That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah I think you can do whatever you want with uh, the Google, you know, YouTube views and stuff. Uh, be creative, try different things, maybe yeah. test it if Apple will approve it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. And Andy said, thank you, gentlemen. That's a good one. Thank you, Andy. Patrick asks, do casual games typically do better as portrait games? You want to start? <laughs> so I'm going to take casual games to mean more of like a puzzle type genre, like a Candy Crush Saga or Lily's Garden. Um, I think there's a large number of games that could fall into that category, though. So I'm going to assume that we're talking about that. Um, and I'm also going to assume that portrait is uh you know just like a, a standing up yeah. i don't think it necessarily has to be um i personally kind of like portrait games because it's easier for me to not have to flip my phone but at the same time like you know i play a large number of landscape games and like it's fine too um i i think merge dragons is landscape since i was just playing with it so i would say i i don't think it matters that much i think it's more about is the game fun yeah yeah, I agree. I mean, Angry Birds, you know, landscape, color switch, crossy road, portrait. It doesn't really matter. Is the game fun? That's that's the extent of it, Patrick. I don't think it matters. You're you're too much into the weeds. Just think about the game, core gameplay, and it, it'll be fine. All right, Johan. Hey, Steve, would you review an app on the live stream that hasn't been released yet? Yeah, Johan, send me a test flight. No problem. I think it's a great way to get early user feedback. Something that we recommend anyways. And then... Vignac asked stuff about AdMob. So thank you guys for answering his questions in there. Okay, here you go. Here's a good one for you, Tom. For your, it's Cy, again, he's a big fan of yours, <laughs> Tom. For your clients, what's the typical revenue split of rewarded surveys for end ads? Oh, it all depends on the game. Um, 
So, you know, I was talking to one of our more heavy RPG uh, studio CEOs uh, a little while ago. And, um, you know, we were talking about their game and, you know, the game that they had was a little bit more of on the casual side than their traditional ones. So normally their ARP DAO is closer to like a dollar. Um, for this one, it was like 44 cents. Um, and then if you were looking at total revenue from like surveys and ads for them, it was somewhere between like seven and 10% of their revenue. Um, which was decent considering they kind of hide the stuff because most of their revenue comes from like all their in-app purchase stuff. Um, but that's very typical of RPG genres. You know, once you get into the more casual style things, you know, ads and surveys can be more like 50 to 75% of revenue. It, it all kind of depends like on the gameplay retention rates, you know, spending all those different things in there. Um, I, I don't know if that completely answers the question but hopefully it gives you some insights. Yeah, I think it's a tough question to answer. All right, Vitaly asks, quick dumb question, never a dumb question, Vitaly, that's what we're here for. What's the best way to fill in the keywords field? For example, water tracker, water reminder, or is it water? So it's a ladder, it's, you wanna do the commas, water, comma, tracker, comma, reminder. That'll fill in water tracker and water reminder. And if you're already using water, which you probably should, like water tracker in your title, then you don't need to add it in your keyword field. Some people say that it works. I've tried it out myself, it doesn't work in terms of repeating it. It might just depend on the app from, but a general case of thumb is if you already have the keywords or part of the keyword phrase in your title or subtitle, you're good to go in the keyword field itself. Cool. All right, should we get into the other app that we yeah. have? So we're doing we have word blocks. the word blocks one. Word right, boss. No. Yeah, word boss. word boss. I'm sorry, word boss. So here, let me show that on our screen here. I'm gonna take a look at the screenshots first and foremost. The word boss, let me see their question. We've got, oh, it's Sai. Hey, there you go. All right, Sai, I'm glad you're here. It says, we need help with low retention, high uninstalls, and then not making money. All right, well, that's what we're here for. Sai, so let's see. So yeah, I, I uh, approached this again first. I, I'm all about the psychology, at least lately. Um, and so I was like, so why do people play word games? And so, well, I think at the core, again, it's kind of to be entertained. Um, but if I'm gonna be wasting my time playing some game on my phone, at least there can be some value to me, or I feel like I'm, you know, working my brain, getting smarter and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I was playing this one, and then I also played some Wordscapes by PeopleFun, um, just for some comparison, because I know that one does quite well. Um, so let's see. All right, I'm gonna pull up the app itself and get into it. Start now. Here it is. My Android. I'm loving this new Android phone. Shout out to Rudy for recommending the Moto stuff. All right. I think you guys kind of see this, but we'll get into it. So I just opened the app, Word Boss. So I looks like I like this daily rewards. So 7X claim. Don't forget to claim your rewards for seven days. I don't know what this seven plus 200 means exactly, but I'm going to hit claim. Cool. Again, here's a great opportunity. Allow me to double it up, right? Like watch a video, fill out a rewarded survey. Allow me to double up these rewarded claims because it's gonna, you're gonna make more money just from doing that alone. The, it looks like it's a, judging from the game, a lot of word games into one. So, all right, cool. And again, I think if you find that you are, people are playing a certain type of game, like just feature it a little bit more because again, I'm kind of like, I don't know which one to start with. So you're, yeah, you're it, awesome. it's almost the same as that casino app. I'm like yeah. overwhelmed and I don't yeah. know what to do. And having all these things isn't bad, but it's like, it's like sending someone into like a feature bloated app or something. And mm -hmm. there's like all this stuff. I don't know what to do. I'm like freaked out. And people are probably like, I don't know what's going on. And they just uninstall. Yeah, and look, Sai, like you have four apps that are coming soon, which are great. 
but you don't need them. I'm already overwhelmed and you're, you're overwhelming me more by showing me more icons and all they're saying is coming soon. So again, I would probably make one prominent that you found that more people play. Maybe they come back. The cohort says they come back a lot more if they play word stacks or impossible, whatever it is that you find, show that more and then just have more games or like, you know, like a little tab though, I can see more, but I think just cleaning this up a little bit more is going to get you more higher retention. Cause right now I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I'm almost like, honestly, Tom, like I almost just want to get out. <laughs> like, yeah, like, right, uh, I, I kind of felt out. the same way. And yeah. even getting into like some of these, like, they seem very easy. Like my daughter actually uh, wanted to play this with, she, she was like, daddy's playing a game and jumped on my lap. Um, and so like, I, I kind of used it more as like a, a tool for teaching her the alphabet because, mm -hmm. you know, compared to wordscapes, which wordscapes was like, and, and so basically the premise is there's like a bubble at the bottom that has some letters in it. And then you have to like, uh, find all the different combinations and it fills in the the words at the top. Um, and it was actually like a little bit challenging, but like I could still figure it out. And when I figured it out, it felt good. Like it was challenging enough that I could do it. And so it was almost like, uh, you know, Flappy Bird where it's like, you can figure it out. But man, it was <laughs> Flappy Bird hard to get through those like different pillars, you know, beyond like the first couple. Um, and so I think having a little bit of challenge in there is good. Like in some ways, a lot of these games are just too easy. Yeah. Um, so. And so I feel like they're a little too easy. I would probably take what you said and just make them separate apps. Like, is there any reason why it has to all be within one, like have separate apps and monetize on all of them? Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And so like, your word boss allows me to watch a video double up. I think the I, no thanks is a little bit too big for my taste. Like just yeah. make it a little bit smaller. I have noticed that the, it could be my phone. I know there's so many different resolutions on Android, but it's kind of cut off, which it's like, doesn't make me feel good about the app. So I'm gonna hit no thanks. Sorry, Sai. I'll do it later. Wedding. Uh, er, okay. So I don't know. See, you see this, it's getting cut off right now. Blank to try for free at the top bottom right, left corner. And that just doesn't make me feel good about the game, but all right, we'll, we'll, we'll do this dress ring groom. I mean, I like this game. It's pretty fun, mm -hmm. but here's a great example too. Like instead of making me maybe go to all four, think about where is, are there ways that you can break it in, but maybe I, Oh, you want me to go to all four. So can oops, candy, sugar, jam, <gasps> Tom, oh, muffin. muffin. Yeah, there you go. It has fur. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm playing the one that's like a matching one, and now I'm getting to like level seven. Like, I, it takes me a little while to like, you know, dig into them. So that's good. Like, I feel like this should okay. have been like a game featured itself, though. Um, yeah. Like, and, and this one could have been a game itself, and you just like are getting right into it um, right away. So they don't have that overwhelming screen of, everything that's going on um it looks like office and then colleague maybe for some reason it wasn't oh he's gonna burn the o oh he's trying to burn it okay now level clear let's see what happens again the animations are nice mm -hmm. again i would say like 2x you know like instead of i don't know why it's, you put 70 coins instead of 40 just make it 80, you know, make it three x whatever it is like these coins don't mean anything to you so right. i was just giving away what what do the coins mean? What can I do with them? True. I guess I can get more tips. Here, let me get out. So right now it feels slow in a way for some reason. Like all these little animations, I quick them up a little bit because it just feels slow to me. And then I don't I I think I I don't like how it's like shaded. Just make them bright and bolded. I like that you're trying to make it cool animation. But if I pick word search for example, it unlocks. This is kind of, but it, not necessary. Like cool but not necessary. You could probably spend your time more on fixing some of this stuff rather than, because if it's dim, it's like, I think that I can't press anything. Like make them light, make them bright. So. Anyway. Yeah. Probably what I would do is I would separate these into individual games mm -hmm. and then try to get some downloads on each and very closely monitor all my metrics to see like, 
which of these seems to have the best retention. And then I would just double down on that particular game and focus on making it better. Um, Because trying to optimize five games at once is going to be pretty much impossible. Um, So, you know, find one that seems to be working and then double down on just boosting up your retention there. And once you have your retention, then you can start to look at, um, you know, video revenue and stuff. Because, you know, I think you say low retention, high on installs, not making money. That doesn't make uh, or surprise me at all uh, if you're not having the retention and people are uninstalling it. So the first thing is figure out which of these games is worth pursuing. People are actually finding it fun enough to play. Um, and it is possible that none of them are fun enough to play. Although I think some of them are. They are. You know, they're, they're, they're interesting to me. Yeah. Um, how do they compare to all the other word games out there? I don't know. But, you know, find the variation where people seem to be finding it the most fun because they are coming back and then just double down on making that experience better and better. Yep, I agree. Look, look at this, Tom. I can't even watch the video for some reason. I was like, I'm going to watch a video for you, Sai, but I can't do it. I have to hit no thanks. I don't know what's happening. So you might want to fix that too. That might be <laughs> the reason you're not making any money off of this. People want to watch a video for you, but they can't. All right, I think we're good. Anything else you want to add on to this? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing is just like, when I want to figure out what these coins actually do. Here, we can press into it. Yeah, I can't, when I press into the coins, nothing happens. So that's, that's something. I'm assuming the coins side's not here to tell us, I don't think, but it allows us to do certain things. Like here, I'll get this hint. Uh, this hint is not even working. There's a lot of things that aren't working. It's locked and I don't know why it's locked, but you can point out. So here, it's as I'm hitting this C, I'm using up coins and it's showing me letters. I don't know what these letters are for. I guess they're locking them so that I have time. I don't know. I don't mm. know what these letters are for, but I don't know what this locked. If you If it's locked, it's just a bad user experience if I'm click tapping on something that's locked and you're not showing me what it does anyways. Like pop up something, make me pay you or do something when I'm locked. If it's locked, like how do I unlock it? I don't even know that. So. Oh, I see. I can use them to put my like letters in here Yeah. for, for shine. So yeah, there are ways. Um... Yeah, look, I can so, watch yeah. the video by finding this, but I can't, nothing happens when I tap it. So your video <laughs> ad thing is not working well. I think, yeah, I think finding the the game variation that is working and honestly using a uh, analytics tool like game analytics or amplitude or something, you probably could just like set up some kind of baby test with your existing app and just send them right into the one variety and don't see the other ones and see what, you know, which retention rate works the best. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I feel like as you get into here, setting up then some guides on, um, you know, what those coins do, how to do the different things, just really focusing in on that first time user experience, because as you get to the harder levels, like it does push your brain a little bit, at least mine, maybe I'm just really bad at, you know, word things. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely focus in on that. And then I think once you fix that retention by focusing in on the one mechanic, the one game that's working, um, the monetization can be easily fixed. And that's where we can start to, you know, better optimize the rewarded video views. Um, that's where we can add rewarded surveys, figure out in-app purchases, special offers, all those kind of things um, can can come later. But until you fix them out, the retention, it's going to be very difficult to do any of that stuff. Yeah, Sai says, try Word Sky or Word Bubble. So I guess I'm supposed to, it's like a snake game. I'm supposed to knock out the extra letter so I can spell gem, knock out the X. Ah, that's kind of clever. Again, it feels slow. Kids these days, they want, I'm a kid, Tom. Kid <laughs> they want it fast. Like it feels a little bit slow. I know it's just the first level, but I think you can make it faster. Or like not, instant, that slow. instant win as soon as you figure it out. Yeah. So there's, look, it's pretty slow. I can, because I almost want, like, you know, the one thing I learned from Matthew Hall too and the flappy bird was if you die on the first one you're like what that was so hard let me try again you know there's this little a rush that comes in that you want to be able to die and i know matthew hall said this in her during our interview he's like i really want to learn from flappy bird 
and make it so that you can die on your first turn. And I think you think through that and you're like, people want to try harder. You know, we want to go after things that we can't accomplish. There's a, you know, like dating to us, just what I'm going to say. But that, that's what I would say from word sky side, you wanted me to try this. This is the thing that I would say from you. It's so slow. Like allow me to lose. It's okay. If I lose, yeah, I'm just yeah. Gonna on purpose. The, the word bubble feels really fat. Like compared to like a fruit ninja where stuff is like coming down fast or going up fast. Like I, you know, yeah. So slow. Yeah, I'm, I'm a so word easy. boss, but it's pretty easy. All right. I think that was good. Let, we got a few more minutes, so let's answer some more questions. Bianca asks, and I'll bring this back. Follow up on Vitaly's question, just for clarification for long tail keywords, still separate each word with commas. So Bianca depends on the keyword, but yes, separate everything by commas. Some people put it as one and then put a comma like word tracker, word, I mean, I'm sorry, water space tracker comma, but I generally just go water comma tracker and then anything else. So what we talked about before. And then Rolando asks, Steven Tom, we love your thoughts on a new game. Okay. Rolando, go fill out that form, roast your app, go to theoremreach.com. If you want Tom's advice on this too, go to theoremreach.com and just fill out that form and we'll talk about it there. So cool. Anybody else have any other questions before we say goodbye? Tom, I thought that was brilliant, man. Like it's, I love doing this stuff and I love looking at other people's apps because you know, like I think we as developers, we tend to hide and we try to share, not share so much, but this type of valuable feedback can take you so much more, like share your apps as much as possible. Go to like usertesting.com, like get real people talking about your app as they're playing it. Because yes, the analytics will tell you the data, the numbers, but I think qualitative feedback is also just as important. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I'm always amazed by the, like the quality of stuff that, you know, people put out. So, you know, in both of these apps, like they're, they're very quality games that are put together. Um, you know, there might be a few little like graphics or animation things that should be tweaked, like tweaking the psychology, all those like little tweaks that I say, you know, takes your game from being like pseudo average and decent to like, you know, on track to being a, a you know, a revenue generator for you. So both of them are, are so close. Um, I know, so, you know, it's going to take some time to get all those things right because it's iteration and it's testing and it's trying and stuff. Um, uh, but it, it, they're definitely both close. And, um, I, I think they'd both be good candidates for rewarded surveys. They'd also both be good candidates for our new product, uh, userwise that IO, you know, to get that qualitative feedback, tying it to the data, uh, you know, to be able to do those types of offers or those like the cadence of offers that I mentioned that Slotomania has that, um, you know, we don't have here. So, um, yeah, I definitely love to talk to both of those apps too. And I think figuring out those small details is <laughs> probably the hard challenge. Um, but, but we love helping people, you know, figure out how to do that. Yeah. Like it, like Tom said, reach out to him. You, you guys already filled out that form. Sarah and Sai, like just reach out to Tom and he, he's going to, he'll take you even further along with what we did right now. Vignette asked before we say goodbye, you know, has anyone used ad mobs to market their app? He wanted my opinion on this. A lot of people just use monetize to ad mob to monetize, but can you use it as a growth channel? Vignette, it's all about testing, right? Like if you've got, I know there's a lot of discussion in the comments about this, but if you got a little bit of budget, just test it and see what the retention rate is, what the monetization rate is, what are these users doing? And just figuring out that, Hey, these are good users. They're probably going to be good users because if you do the targeting, right, they're going to be coming from other games. So they, they love playing games. They're probably going to be good users, but it's all about testing. I don't think it's a crappy answer. And I hate saying this all the time, but it really depends on the app and it really depends on a lot of different factors. What may be working for others may not be working so much for you. So if you've got a little bit of budget, which it sounds like you do test it out, see what happens. And I, I generally hear from a lot of publishers that Google and Facebook are the only two channels that really work. So <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. um, finding channels outside of that is actually the difficulty. Um, so I would be surprised if AdMob couldn't work for you. It, you might have to find the right variation, the right thing, and you know figure out your retention and all that stuff so that it does work. But it, it should be able to, I would think. Yeah. Tom, anything else that you want to hit before we say goodbye? No, I don't think so. This has been fantastic, Steve. I look forward to the next one of these. And uh, you know, if anyone has any questions in the meantime, you can always hit us up at you know theoremreach.com. Uh, anything app monetization related or, or otherwise, um, we'd love to help you guys figure out how to make more money from your apps.
Oh, I love this little thing, Tom. So go check out theorumreach.com. I mean, they love this thing. Well, you guys got to yeah, tell me where you're using for that. So if you guys want to get your app roasted on the next one with Tom and I, just go fill out this form, theorumreach.com slash roast my app, roast dash my dash app.com as well. Or you just go to theorumreach.com. It's right at the top as well. They're going to add, like I said, you're this close. Like the games that we looked at, these are the games that people filled out. Super well done. Graphics awesome. Everything's awesome. These small little tweaks are good, what's going to help you take it to the next level as well. Join us next week. We have Mel from App Tweak, and we're going to talk all about, I know a lot of questions that we come in all the time about ASO. Well, we're going to talk all about ASO, what's working. I'm doing a ton of tests too that I'm going to be sharing with you guys on that next week. So if you want to learn all about this, Bianca, Vitaly, when you do these quote unquote dumb questions, we're going to talk about all about ASO in next week's session as well as auditing your apps and giving you aso advice tom thank you so much for coming on and doing this man always a pleasure we'll talk right, soon guys. tom will be back next month so fill out that form and we'll be back next month thank you guys for watching i'll see you next week bye